What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video I want to talk about using Curveloft to create geometry inside your models like grids and other things like that. So before we get started I want to take a second and thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Jason Fisher, Robert Ketter, Albert Holton, Jose Cervantes, Roland Harrimans, and Christopher Baxter. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so sometimes what you want to do inside of SketchUp is you want to create a face um, that's kind of split up into a grid, and you don't necessarily want to go through and do that with sandbox tools for whatever reason using the create grid tool. Um, maybe this follows along a curve or something like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But what we're going to do for right now is I want to show you a quick easy way to take a shape like this one and instead of drawing a rectangle and splitting it up into a grid, so by using like the move tool and then using the divided by key, what you can do instead is you can take this and you can just divide this edge by right clicking on it and selecting the option for divide into the number of segments that you want this to be created. Um, so now if I click on this, I divided this into I think 10 segments. And if I go in here and click on these and then now use the extension curve aloft, and click on the button for loft by spline, what that's going to do is that's going to create a grid inside these, um, inside or between these two edges. And the nice thing about this is this is editable. You can adjust what that grid looks like using the tools in here. So like for example, you can adjust the number of segments in here to whatever you want. So this is really good for dividing up different faces, that kind of thing. So in um, a couple different uses for that. So let's say for example, we're going to start I'm going to make a copy of this off to the side because we'll do a couple examples, is let's say that we wanted to create maybe like a, one of those, um, I think they call them precast waffle slab ceilings. So they were the precast structures that have all the like rectangular boxes um, on the underside. So what we could do is we could select these two edges and then use loft by spline. And that's going to allow us to create this face. And you can see how this is all in here as hidden geometry. So if you go to view hidden geometry, you can see how even though this shows up as a flat face, it's actually been divided. Well, since we now have that hidden geometry, what we can do is use an extension like a multiple offset. And we can select this. And note that this, you're going to have to have your hidden geometry turned on. Like if you just select this box, it's not going to work. But if you go to view and turn on hidden geometry and select all of this different geometry, it's like this has a grid on it and then you could use um, extensions multiple offsets and I will link to multiple offsets in the notes down below um, but let's say we wanted to offset this by a constant distance of we'll say three inches to the inside and then we'll click OK well what that'll do is that'll offset based on all of these different boxes in here well what that means is now you can come in here and you can push pull these but um, because of the way we made this, it's not going to allow us to push pull it with all that hidden geometry in there. So one thing you could do is you could just delete it back out. So be because this is split up by this hidden geometry, SketchUp won't allow you to push pull this um, or push pull all of this at once. Um, so if I try to push pull it, you can see how that's not going to work. So you have a couple different options there as well. The first is you could delete this out. So if I wanted to, I could just delete this whole thing out and then just draw an edge or maybe draw a box across the whole thing actually in order to heal it back in. So then because I deleted this out and healed it back in, this goes back in as one interrupted, uninterrupted face and you can push pull the whole thing. The other thing you could do if you didn't want to delete all of that out um, you wanted to keep all that hidden geometry in there, you could also use the extension joint push pull because the extension joint push pull allows you to push pull multiple different faces at once. So you could use this and for a waffle slab it would probably go down not up, but you could use this to create something like this if you wanted to really easily. Um, so this just gives you a lot of flexibility and the reason this is superior to using something like create grid with sandbox tools is you can affect the width of the boxes you create. So like for example, let's say for this one, 
I wanted to come in here with loft by spline and create this face, but let's say I wanted these to be longer, more rectangular shapes that are created in here. Well, I could adjust the number of segments that are created by clicking on this green button up here and typing in something like two. Well then, if I type in something like two, I can create something with a grid that's other than a square. And then now, I could just do the same thing, where I could do view, hidden geometry, and you have to make sure you're actually in the object for that to work. in order to create this same kind of grid. Well, what I could do with this is I could then maybe like stand it up. Something like that. I would probably take all of this and group it just so I have these faces in here as separate objects. But then I could take this and I could use joint push pull in order to give it some thickness here. And then I could do a select all and deselect all of my edges and I could add something like glass in here. And so then if you're able to create a structure like this, you could take it into something like Inkscape or some other rendering program. And since you could apply that glass material, you can get the light rays kind of shining through that object onto a ground plane or something like that. So it just allows you to create really interesting structures and other things like that. But more than that, it's just a time saver. So once you start getting an idea of how extensions like Curvaloft create geometry, you can start using that in order to speed up your modeling inside of SketchUp. So this is probably a little bit more of an advanced tutorial, but I, I think it's really good to know because I think knowing how to use hidden geometry and how it interfaces with everything else in SketchUp can make you a much more powerful modeler. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you found this helpful, if this was interesting to you, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.